So hey everybody and welcome to a new show, the Power Toku Show DX, where we have thought-provoking adult discussions about kids' live-action shows and just Japanese live-action shows in general. I am Luis Contreras, you might know me as Sentai Seiya from Collection DX, and this is my partner in crime. Sup everybody, uh, I am Josh Reed, also known as J-Man on the site, and uh... Basically, we're just here to fill you in on all sorts of wonderful things Toku-related. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so let's get started. Uh, Power Rangers Mega Force. So, you up to date with that, Josh? Yes, I am. What do you think so far? Uh, so far, I am really digging it. Uh, the actual show Mega Force is currently over. You can actually watch all of it on both Hulu and Netflix, and I'm pretty sure Amazon Instant Video, if you're cool, and go with the Amazon route. Yeah, got that happen. Uh, but so far, I really loved the show. It was exactly what I thought it would be, and that's all that it needed to be, which was, you know, a Power Ranger show. There were explosions, people wearing suits, and things exploded. I've heard a lot of people say it was a lot better than Go Seizure. But oh. then that doesn't take much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually not a huge Ghost Ager fan. Mm. Uh, I really loved the suits, but there was just something about the show that I just didn't care for. It felt very generic. I think I got like two episodes in and I just really didn't care for it. Also, the sound effects were really annoying. Mm. There were a lot of angel harps going off everywhere and it was just annoying to listen to. Mm. And of course that got cut out of the US version. They didn't really play up the whole angel theme, did they? No, they weren't angels at all. They were mm. just kids fighting aliens. But not angels. <laughs> nope, totally not angels. Cool, cool. And so this is going to transition into Super Mega Force, which is coming up in, what, February? Yes, it is. Uh, the air date is February 15th. So mark your calendars if you want to see what happens with the Mega Force crew. So I think it's been a while, though, since we've had a crew transition from one show to another, right? Can't remember the last time. Yeah. I mean, technically they did it with uh, Samurai because they did Super Samurai, but that they doesn't really count. No, they fudged that one. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was still uh, Shinkenger, yeah. Yeah. So, like, this is, like, the last time they've had one team transitioning to another since, like, Power Rangers in space. In space. Yeah. 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 So that's going to be. So how, how did you like the team, though? I actually really liked the team. I, I really loved everyone that they picked. Uh, everybody so far has been fantastic in all of their roles. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, good thing they brought them back. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm not sure how they're going to move forward. I might have rather have seen, uh, you know, all new people take over mm. in the, you know, Go Kaiger suits. Um uh, but we'll see how everything goes, how everything transitions. Yeah, from the trailers, it seems like they're just going to get the new morpher, and then they morph from the, uh, the Gosezer suits over to Gokaiger. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I really hope they actually do just sort of forego using the uh, Megaforce suits, as mm -hmm. I'm going to call them. I'm willing to bet, though. It'll be like a couple episodes of that, and then eventually they'll just skip over to just they're going to start being you know, the Super Mega Force characters. They're not going to bother with the old suits anymore. Yeah, I really hope so, because I really, I, I love the Gokaiger suits. They make yeah. me so happy. It doesn't yeah. hurt that uh, Gokaiger is one of my all-time favorite Super Sentai shows. It was a very cool show. Um, so do you think they're going to play up the whole pirate theme in this one? You know, uh, a lot of the things that I've seen, uh, a lot of the materials doesn't look like they're really like, woohoo, look, we're pirates. It's more just like, hey, look, we're we're different. Mm. We're in super mega modes. Yeah. It's kind of weird, though. You would think they would go with the whole pirate theme. Yeah, I would have liked to see something like Power Rangers Pirate Force or yeah. something <laughs> like that. But, yeah. you know, as long as we get, you know, go kaiger ish toys in America, that's that's what I care about. Yeah. We'll check those out, too. Um, I know my nephew's probably going to get a couple for his birthday and Christmas and that kind of stuff, so very cool. He's definitely not going to get the Japanese versions from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, his father actually uh, told me a story um, for Christmas. 
he got him. He said a $100 uh, Power Rangers Megazord. So I'm guessing it was the Shinkeno. Because that's the only $100 uh, Megazord that they have in at Toys R Us right now that I can mm-hmm. think of. He said Nevermore. Uh, I guess he lost all the parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... I mean, uh, the American market is definitely uh, a little bit different when it comes to toys. And I think... I don't mind the fact that they're a little bit cheaper. Because, co- you know, the kids are going to lose them. Uh, and they're meant to be played with, so... I know a lot of people hate on Bandai of America, but a different market. Yeah, uh, that's actually something that I was going to bring up later on. You know, there is a lot of people who are just like, oh, I'll never buy anything Bandai of America. The quality is bad. But you also have to look that, you know, the price is like slashed entirely. Oh, yeah. Sure, you could pay 80 bucks for the Japanese Megazord, or you can pay 30 and get the U.S. version. Yeah, and when you look at what you get, though, too, for like 25 30 bucks for a Megazord, it's actually quite a good deal. Yeah, I guess we'll bring this little guy up later. But Yeah. We'll talk about him later. So, we're breaking away a little bit. Um, yeah, just a bit. <laughs> all right. We'll get this down. All right. So, next, uh, the new show, or the current show, the Super Sentai show in Japan, is Juden Sentai Kyo Ryuja. Those guys right there with the dinosaurs. And so, for those who don't know, this is going to air in the States uh, two years from now, right? Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. If, I mean, if everything goes according to plan, yeah. Unless Maybe. they do Power Rangers Spec Ops, Super Spec Ops the next year or something. Yeah. Crazy spec like Ops, Super Spec Ops, then we get Dino f- Force... <laughs> Carnival. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dino Carnival. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's interesting, though? If, if this does go according to plan and schedule this is actually going to come out the same year that the new jurassic park movie does <laughs> so that's kind of a neat thing that's kind of awesome yeah so kids will get double dose of dinosaurs and i mean kids love their dinosaurs oh yeah dinosaurs are awesome yeah have you ever wondered what it is though i mean every little kid seems to just kind of gravitates towards them i don't know i think it's because they're big powerful mm-hmm. Yeah, monster yeah. lizard things. Yeah. They're just awesome. Could squash their parents if it really wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, this show is almost ending. Um, Tokyuga is right around the corner. Uh, so, what do you what do you think about the show so far? Are you liking it? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm loving uh, the current superhero time uh, segment that we got going on mm-hmm. with both this and Gaim. Yeah. It's definitely a fun show to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really glad that we finally have like a gigantic uh, Super Sentai team. That's like ten of them. Yeah, yeah. there's ten, ish. <laughs> there, there are a couple of members who really aren't part of the Sentai team. Like there are two uh, Kiryu Violets. Spoilers. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. And, and then there's uh, Death Ruger in the movie, too. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, it's... yeah. Well, never mind. I was about to <laughs> spat out more spoilers. Never mind! <laughs> <laughs> Disregard la, la, la. everything that I'm la, la. saying. <laughs> All right. So I'm not caught up with it, but it's definitely a fun show to watch. Um, The story is okay. For me, it didn't grab me, you know, to the point where I have to watch it every single week, but it, I come back every month or so, and I just keep catching up. I can definitely say that it was perhaps a little slow uh, towards the beginning, mm. but it's really ramped up to where I can't wait to see the next episode. Yeah. So what would you think of the carnival mode? Carnival is awesome. Really? You liked it? Yeah, I, li- I like carnival mode. Mainly because I like little mini Tira. Oh, yeah. I don't like the outfit, though, personally. Mm. It's, a, it's a little gaudy. Well, I, <laughs> they I even mentioned... Yeah, so they even mentioned it in one of the episodes. Yeah. How just gaudy it is. Uh just my thing. <laughs> yeah. I really love super busy suits, so it, it it was right up my alley. Gotcha. I prefer the cleaner look, I think. Uh yeah. So that's it for Kyoruga, really. Um show's about to end, uh going good, going pretty strong. Um have you read anything about the ratings or anything on this show? No. I try I not to spoil my mind mm. with ratings. Because I know GoBusters didn't do too great. Yeah. That was not doing very hot over in Japan. But the toys, I think, sold pretty well. Maybe. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seems like no matter what happens with the show, the toys always sell. Yeah. All right, so that's pretty much all we have to say about Kyo Ryuger for right now. On to the next one. You want to take this one? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure how many of you are very familiar with Kamen Rider, but the current Kamen Rider show airing right now is Kamen Rider Gaim. It's uh, basically guys who use the powers of fruit to become samurai, mm -hmm. and it's awesome. It is awesome. Honestly, I was a hater when this uh, got announced. I was like, really, they're doing samurai now, and they're doing fruits? I wasn't digging it, but... They're so unapologetic about the, their use of fruits and samurais together that they, they just don't care. They're just like, we're shoving it in your face, and you're going to like it. And it's cool. I mean, I definitely am enjoying this show. Yeah, the show has definitely ramped up. Like, it is that really good match uh, mix of uh, both silly and serious all at the same time. And that's hard to do, too, because I know a lot of shows uh, try to go for both, and it never works out. Um, I know with Go Busters, they tried a, lo a lot to keep the silliness in the beginning and make it serious, and it d didn't really work out for me. But I think it really got a little bit better later on in the show. They made it more silly, didn't quite make it as serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a good combination. Um, I have to catch up on it, though. <laughs> You're yeah. falling behind, man. You're I know. I know. It's that Fire Emblem, dude. <laughs> it's taking up all my time. <laughs> Yeah. Been, yeah, been ignoring the girlfriend too. <laughs> uh, she'll be trying to she'll be trying to talk to me. Like, don't talk to me, woman. My <laughs> guys are dying on the battlefield. <laughs> My oh, men in rubber suits are fighting other men in rubber suits. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'll probably catch up with it this week though. I only have a few episodes left of Kyoryuger, and that's next on the block is going to be Common Writer Gaim. So. Uh, speaking of Gaim, uh, up on Collection DX, where we both uh, contribute to, uh, we got some Common Rider Gaim figure arts that just got announced. And so, for those who don't know, the figure arts line is uh, Bandai super articulated, super well detailed figures that just kick ass. I mean, really, um, just blow anything you get in the American market market out of the water. Mm -hmm. These things look fantastic. Just looking at the promotional shots that they've sent over to us. I cannot wait to pick these guys up. And of course this is the main character, Gaim. And if you're going to pick this guy up, you actually get um, a special stand, right? Or a little stage for all your common writers from Gaim. Mm -hmm. It's a first release bonus. So uh, only like the first... I don't even know what, what numbers we're looking at here. But basically the first run of figures will come with these little stages. Yeah. I think if you pre-order right now, though, you're pretty safe to get one. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It'll be like when the... Er hold on. When the uh, reissue comes around, it, that you won't be getting those. Um, so right now, if you want to get it, or you're on the fence about getting it, you should definitely jump on it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. These things look fantastic. Yeah. Super sexy. <laughs> uh, they're so super shiny. I just... They're yeah. nice. And then so his buddy, uh, Banana Arms, right there. <laughs> buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Shows how far I've gotten in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mr. Banana Knight. Anyways, so he comes with that shiny um, folding background that we saw in the other picture, too, right? Yeah, that thing. So that's also another first release Actually, bonus. Does he? Yep, yeah, okay. Description. Yeah, he comes with the uh, folding oh, okay. background. He comes. He comes with the backdrop, and Gaim comes with the display base. Yeah. So if you want that setup, you have to get both of them. Yeah. Ooh, that's how they get you. Yeah. <laughs> it's Bandai. They always throw you the good stuff in, at the beginning. Give you the special effect parts or the stands, and they get you hooked on the line, and you have to complete it. Yeah, they they split up the special accessories that you need for both of them in between you know, both of the releases, so, you know, you can't just get the super awesome base in one of the figures, you have to get the super awesome base in all of the figures, or else you can't complete everything. Yeah. <sighs> That's how Bandai takes our money. <laughs> uh, and I both love them and hate them for it. Yeah. Alright, so that's it for the Gaim toys, um, and we just got off a holiday break. Uh, did you get any cool uh, tokusatsu or um, any uh, Power Rangers toys recently? I actually did. 
My mother is a wonderful, wonderful lady, and she actually picked this up for me. Ooh, nice. Did you get it at Toys R Us? I'm pretty sure she ordered it online from Toys R Us. Mm. If you guys have seen these, they are fantastic. I highly recommend them. Check it out. Oh, these things are cool. I really oh. love the keys. The keys are a lot smaller than the uh, Japanese keys, but they're cool because they flip up really easily. <laughs> Alright, let's check this. Nice! Yeah! <laughs> They're definitely playing to that nostalgia. Absolutely. They're grabbing all those kids of the uh, 90s by the balls and telling you, you gotta buy this. You have to buy this. You must own this or you will die entirely. Very cool. Is that the only thing you got, though? And that's the only thing I got uh, for Christmas. But uh, lately, the uh, Super Mega Force toys have been hitting retail, and I've been picking up several of the things, including what I've already kind of showed you guys. This is the uh, legendary Megazord. I actually picked it up for twenty four ninety nine at Target, which is actually a great deal. Oh yeah, they're always a little bit cheaper than Toys R Us. Mm -hmm. But then Toys R Us is usually the first to get that kind of stuff. Yeah, like you could have gotten it back in like November or early December if you would have picked it up from uh, Toys R Us, but you would have paid like thirty three dollars instead of twenty five. Yeah, how's the uh, Toys R Us distribution stuff on your end? Because I know it takes a while for stuff to hit the, the Midwest. It's hit or miss. Uh, I'm in Georgia, so out on the East Coast. Uh, I haven't had a huge issue of them, you know, uh, forgetting about us or anything like that. But uh, sometimes it takes, m takes me a good while to find stuff in the store. And then sometimes it comes, like, early. I don't even realize it's supposed to be there. I think we kind of get screwed. We get the stuff pretty late <laughs> on our end, yeah. Um... I think, like, the Legacy Morphers didn't start showing up till like, the second uh, wave of them. When they did the second gen ones where they fixed the sounds, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, they fixed the sound on the second wave. Well, not really fixed. They just sort of modified the sounds to uh, sound like the uh, gold Legacy Morphers from San Diego Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. Which turned out to not be an exclusive, right? Because I believe that's going to be sold pretty soon. Yeah, actually, uh, they should be shipping out right now. Oh, They're not, cool. you know, 24 karat gold plated. Uh, that that was another thing. You're like, oh, they're gold, and I'm like, well, they're gold plated. There's a difference. <laughs> mm. uh, but anyway, that that's another rant for another time. Yeah. So back to the legendary Megazord. How do you like it? It's delicious. <laughs> Actually, Does it taste? I like Does it. Does it taste? Oh. Does it taste like awesome? Oh. Oh, yeah. Nice. Mm. That's good. I really like it. Uh, the full review will be up probably in a day or two. Maybe by the time this is actually on YouTube and people can actually watch it, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the review will be up at that point. Very cool. So, I got nothing Toka related for the holidays. Well, you I, fail. I know. I didn't ask for anything this year, though. I think uh, I got Walking Dead Compendium 1. Uh, got a couple of 3DS games, uh, some clothes. I always get clothes. That's pretty much it, yeah. Alright, so that's it for the Holiday Toku Gets. So as a weekly thing, or, you know, regular thing on the show, we don't know if we're going to do this weekly, we're going to do a PTSD Recommends. So we're going to talk about a tokusatsu show that people might not be familiar with. And today we're going to talk about one that just wrapped up pretty recently. Shogeki Go Raigan. So, what do you think about this show? This show was uh, what if Garo was a Super Sentai show? Yeah. And also with, more insane. With boobs. With tons boobs. Of, tons, tons and tons of. <laughs> tons and tons of boobs yeah. all over the place. If you want a Toku show with boobs, watch this show. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be watching this, and my girlfriend would be coming into the room, and I would have to just minimize it, because she's yeah. cool. She's cool with me watching like Power Rangers, Super Sentai, Common Rider, but I don't think she's gonna be too keen with me, you know, checking out 
Toku boobs. <laughs> yeah, like you're watching Shogeki Goregon. Someone walks in the room and you switch it to like porn because that would be easier to explain. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. At least porn is like a natural part of a guy's, you know, repertoire of videos. <laughs> It's like, oh, look, look at my space demons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then they start thinking, you know, what's going on with these guys in the rubber suits and there's boobs? Uh, where is this headed? Yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. We're walking down a dark path here. We should, <laughs> we should lighten the mood a little bit. <laughs> so we're, we're not going to touch on hentai or live-action hentai or any no. of that stuff. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> Back on track. Shogeki Go Raigon. Awesome show. Um... The, the people behind this are the people that did Garo, and I think they definitely are big fans of the Super Sentai genre, and they really get it. I mean, um, they totally brought in the five characters, uh, each one of them being a Sentai member, and uh, they really enjoyed making this show. You could tell. I mean, it, it was kind of kind of serious, but not really. I mean, it was a good blend of both. Uh, they had just off-the-wall episodes, like the Hot Spring episode where the story was just ramping up and out of nowhere. Hey, let's go go to the hot springs and yeah, it was it was a cool show. Um kind of sad to see it go. Um the way it ended though, I mean, maybe there's going to be a movie or something coming down the line. Mhm. Mm uh I'm hoping that it did well in Japan so that we get to see more either from a movie or from like uh like a second season. Mm. Uh that would be awesome. It would be cool. Uh yeah, I would be sad to see this go. Um, I mean, as a fellow Toku enthusiast, it's it's good to see people that grew up with this making their own stuff. And I know you're in the same boat with your uh, a movie that you're making right now, correct? Yeah, I'm working on episode three of Card Bart. Yeah. So for those who don't know, uh, Josh is making his own little Toku called Card Bart. And so that's available on YouTube right now. Uh, Genius Fish Sticks is your uh, username, right? Well, now it's J-Man DX because of... Oh, linkage, you changed... Because of uh, linkage. Oh, that's right. All that the cluster All that up. stupid Google <laughs> Plus stuff. Yeah. Freaking Google just trying to make it a thing, but people don't really care for it. Yeah, they're like, oh, you don't want to use Google Plus? We're going to make you if you want to use YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So, check it out. J-Man DX at YouTube. Uh, yeah. How's that coming along? Uh, the third episode is actually coming along quite nicely. I have uh, most of the script and everything completely laid out. Uh, I'm still in the final stages of building the uh, <coughs> new suit that, <laughs> uh, that Colbert's going to get. Oh, spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, Upgrade. Yeah. What's it going to be called? Super Card Bart? <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Predictable. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was thinking about calling it Card Bart RX because yeah. there are some definite uh, Common Rider Black RX references that, mm. I, that I did on purpose. <laughs> but then you don't want to get Toei on your butt. <laughs> yeah, I actually do have a line about him about to call himself the Child of the Sun and someone like shuts his mouth. He's just, they're just like, nah. <laughs> nice. So you're going to have to steal Andy for a weekend to shoot that? More than a weekend, probably. Mm. It's it's gonna take a while to film. Is it gonna be longer than the previous episodes? Yeah, right now, uh, in, with the current iteration of the script, looks to be about fifteen to twenty minutes long. Okay, and the previous ones were like about what five to ten, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, anywhere from three to seven minutes. Okay, gotcha. Cool, cool. So look forward to that. Card Bart episode three. And I think that's gonna do it for the show. Uh, if this airs, you know what I think. I think uh, this is probably going to air. We've done a pretty great job so far. Okay, all right. I'm enjoying it. So, guys, thanks for tuning in to the Power Toku Show DX Episode One. I guess we'll probably call this Proto Episode One since the CDX Show got to have a few beta episodes. Yeah, this is where we get to mess up a little bit and stumble along the way. Yeah, this is this is us uh, learning how to do fancy schmancy shows and whatnot. But this has been the beta proto show, whatever you want to call it, of PTSD. This has been Sentai Seiya. And J-Man. We are out, and we'll see you in a week or two. Or whenever we feel like it. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>
But probably not. Probably not tomorrow. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. 